when Stanford University biology professor Paul Ehrlich and his wife Anne wrote another extremely influential book called The Population Bomb. Like Malthus and Thanos, they argued that without a dramatic reduction in the global population, there would be mass starvation. He writes, quote, The battle to feed all of humanity is over. In the 1970s, hundreds of millions of people will starve to death in spite of any crash programs embarked upon now. His in spite of being completely wrong, Paul Ehrlich clung to his beliefs. He was so certain that in 1980 he accepted a wager with University of Maryland business professor Julian Simon. Simon challenged Ehrlich to pick any basket of raw materials he wished, and a time period of over one year, and bet that those resources would be cheaper in inflation-adjusted terms over that time period. Ehrlich chose copper, chromium, nickel, tin, and tungsten, and a period of 10 years. When the bet expired in October 1990, Ehrlich was wrong on all counts. Every commodity he chose was more available and cheaper than it was when he made the bet. And that was in spite of the largest growth in population of any decade in history. So, what happened? Well, like Thanos, Malthus and Ehrlich misunderstood both the nature of natural resources and the origin of material prosperity. Contrary to what they believe, economies are not zero-sum. Wealth is not something that just exists in the world inherently and then has to be divided up between people competing for whatever is available. Instead, wealth is a creation of human ingenuity and expands with every new valuable innovation. The more we are able to specialize and trade freely with other people, the faster those innovations build off of each other to raise people's standard of living. Likewise, what we call natural resources, while finite in a technical sense, are mainly limited by our imagination and understanding of how to use them. 150 years ago, crude oil was found all over the world, but nobody knew what to do with it, so we just thought of it as useless black goo. We burned cow dung and killed whales to heat and light our homes. New technology will eventually replace oil and could easily be based on new resources no one dreamed of a generation ago. Always remember that more people doesn't just mean more mouths to feed. It also means more minds to create and more hands to build. As long as people are free to be entrepreneurial and explore new ideas, in a context where other people are also free to decide for themselves which innovations are valuable to them, then wealth will increase. And that's exactly what's happened in the real world, wherever there are private property rights, low barriers to entrepreneurship, and free trade. The global population is now over seven times what it was when Malthus wrote his essay. And yet, in the last 30 years alone, we have cut extreme poverty in half. Fewer people are dying of starvation today than ever. Per capita incomes are higher. Child labor is down. It turns out that the main problem was never that the world was overpopulated, but that its people were never free enough to create wealth. And when they did create something new and valuable, they weren't allowed to keep it. Most of history is a story of authoritarian top-down control, power struggles, and war. Rulers like Thanos use violence to amass power and impose their own vision on society by force. In Avengers Infinity War, Thanos claims that his own world was ravaged by poverty, and that committing genocide against half the population would have solved the problem. Now that he has all the power in the universe, he is ready to do the same on an epic scale. Tragically, the movie itself doesn't actually offer much of a counter-argument to Thanos' mistaken ideas. Only the rejection of his evil methods. This is a shame. Both are wrong, but while everybody already recognizes that genocide is bad, there are still tons of people out there who believe he's right about everything else. He's not. What the world and the universe needs is more wealth and more freedom, not fewer people.